It is the following morning. The loaves have been proofing, cold proofing in the fridge, which is like a much slower kind of fermentation. And pulling them out, they look nice and puffy. We can see that there's a bubble here and, and it's more domed, <clears throat> more domed this way than slack like that. And that's a sign that there's internal pressure and that it's puffing up, which is good. If we pull it out and it's kind of droopy, that means we've overproofed and that our oven rise isn't gonna be as nice. But these look great. So this is how we pull the dough out onto parchment paper. Leah's going to place it on top, put a hand over and flip it. And then gently peel the fabric away. And there it is. She's then going to do the same with the other. Unwrap it. Oh, that's a big one. Nice big boy. Also domed the way we like to see it when we unwrap. Sometimes in the summer you'll actually see it like puffing up like crazy and that's also a good sign that we're gonna get good rise in the oven. Flipped over onto the parchment paper. Fabric peeled back. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, it looks nice. It's standing up nicely and not puddling. Now Leah's got a razor blade on a skewer, which she's going to use to score. And I'll go on the other side to film this. It's uh, helpful to sort of lightly sort of pinch the dough to keep it from catching. And you're just using the corner of the blade to give it a nice score on top. Same for this one. And Leah's getting creative with the designs. That's always fun to do. This is sort of the fun part. All the work leads to this. We score the top so that the direction, this is going to rupture and we want it to rupture up. We don't want it to blow the sides out. So that's why we're putting those scores in the top to encourage it to rise even more. Now Leah's gonna transfer these two onto plates. If you're just baking one, you can put it into a Dutch oven. That's actually a really good way to bake uh, sourdough is in a preheated Dutch oven. Uh, preheated as hot as your oven will go. And that actually traps the steam. These guys really need a lot of steam in order to bake. So with my setup, I just bake right on plates at 525 degrees Fahrenheit, but I've also got um, a pan of water inside and it's boiling. You can see that at the back of the oven there. So Leah is going to place these into the oven side by side. The oven's going to be nice and steamy the whole time because of that pan of water. And with this, I can actually watch them as they bake as well, which is nice. So I can look in and see what they're doing. But if you're baking um, in a Dutch oven, it's a little tri trickier because obviously you can't see the progress. So. What I do is I check after about 25 minutes. So we're gonna put the timer at 25 minutes. And we're gonna have a look. So if you're baking a single loaf in a Dutch oven, this is where after 25 minutes you would pull the lid off and um, sometimes it's done, some, sometimes it isn't. I find that if you overproof the dough, it can actually it seems like it burns faster on the outside and I don't understand why that would be, but that's been my experience. Um, you can also spray the loaves with water. I used to do that a lot and it sort of encourages a more uh, crumbly outer crust and, and you get that nice blistery effect that people are really after. But um, this one's gonna be a simpler bake. I've got them both in there and we can watch those guys go and we'll check back after 25 minutes. It's been 25 minutes, they've risen nicely. Let's have a peek. They're starting to go get uh, a lot more golden brown, which is what we're after. But I'm gonna leave them in there and just watch the crust until they have become, uh, they've lost all of that light doughy color. And as soon as the whole crust on the outside is golden, I'll pull them out. 
my oven cooks more aggressively at the back, so I'm going to give them a little spin so they can get gold on both sides. Because right now, if I spin that, you can see it's nice and gold. There's good color on that side. Same with this one. That's what I'm going for. So we'll get those pale sides to the back, add some more color to them. It looks like these loaves are going to take a total of about 50 minutes to bake, 5-0. Uh, I've had smaller loaves take 25 minutes and be totally done, fully brown on all sides. And I've even burnt them in the Dutch oven at lower temperatures and <laughs> shorter times than that. Uh, so it really does change depending on, I think, the time of year, the humidity, and definitely the size of the loaf you're baking. I like to do the double loaf just because I'm, I'm heating up the oven, I'm using up all that energy anyway, so I might as well get as much bread out of it as I can. Um, but these ones, yeah, closer to 50 minutes, 45, 50 minutes, and they'll be looking pretty good. Okay, I think it's time to pull these out. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, there's one. And the other. And these bad boys are, <laughs> they went a little haywire. They, you can see that they actually blew out the bottom. Um, so they ruptured upside down, but this is still like a very happy little loaf. You can see that it blew out the side a bit here too. Our score marks didn't do uh, what we wanted them to, but you know, even with the mistakes, you end up with really good bread. So I'm gonna let that cool on the rack so that air can get all the way around. These are actually still cooking. They're so hot that the insides are going to continue to cook for another 45 minutes. And now this is a pretty important part. If I cut into this right now, I let out all that heat and the bread doesn't get as airy and fluffy and light and the crust doesn't thin out the way we want it to. So it'd be a big mistake. And I made this mistake for a number of months before I figured this out. You can't cut or you should, you definitely shouldn't cut into these right out of the oven. Wait the 30 minutes, 40 minutes, let the insides continue to cook let that crust get nice and thin and you're gonna have a much better loaf. And we can actually test that. You push on it now and it's like, it's hard like concrete. We don't wanna eat hard concrete bread. We want that to be really nice and light. And when we come back to it later and push on it, it'll be way softer. Trust me, try the same thing with yours. Two other fun things to do with bread that's fresh out of the oven. Uh, the first is to listen to it and you'll hear it crackling and cooking, especially as it cools. And the other is to give it a little, give it a little tap. And listen for that hollow drum sound that tells you that the inside is, is uh, well, hollower than it is dense. Uh, with a dense loaf, you're not gonna get that really hollow hollow drum sound. So that's kind of a fun thing to do with a fresh loaf. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be disciplined. We're gonna wait our 45 minutes before cutting into these. It's been about an hour. The loaf is super soft to the touch now. Very different than it was when I first pulled it out of the oven. I'm just gonna give it a cut. We'll see what it looks like inside. That looks great. Mm. Nice and sour. <laughs> smells good, yeah. Nice. So good. <laughs>